Howdy folks, I hope you're having a good one, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles, where today we're going to be following Octopus here as he takes charge of the Japanese Tier 10 heavy cruiser. He's in a division with a Daring, who's also going to be having a good game, and a Golden Lion, who is not. Obviously this is a Tier 10 battle, but it's all Tier 10, there are no Tier 9s, no Tier 8s, for capture point domination here on the sleeping giant map. The Zhao has kind of been the poster boy for player discontent in recent months, because people have been saying for years the Zhao needs a buff, and Wargaming have been saying for years, blah 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 blah, I can't hear you. According to the spreadsheet, the Zhao is fine. According to the players, the Zhao needs a buff. Now, I'm not going to sit here telling you whether or not the Zhao does or does not need a buff. I kind of like the Zhao, but that doesn't mean anything. I kind of like the Tog too, and it's utterly terrible. Nevertheless, the Zhao needing a buff was one of the things that was brought up during the Great World of Warships Player Community Revolt of 2021. And so, Wargaming bowed under pressure and said, amongst many other things, that they were going to give the Zhao a buff, not because they thought it needed one, they took great pains to point that out, but the Zhao would be buffed just to show that they do actually listen to player feedback. And so here we are, months later, and absolutely nothing has been done to the Zhao. I do still think that the Zhao is a good ship, although I do recognise that it's only really good under specific circumstances, when it's kiting away from you. The single most frustrating experience I have ever had in World of Warships were... Oh, hang on, wait, aircraft carriers. The second most frustrating experience I have ever had in World of Warships was... Ooh, maybe two years ago now? The Conqueror had just come out, I had just managed to unlock it, and I had the extreme misfortune... Ooh, the Golden Lion just took a massive hit. Yeah, I did mention that that guy is not going to be having a good game. But I had the extreme misfortune of trying to chase down a retreating Zhao on one flank of a map in my Conqueror. And it's an utter nightmare. The Zhao is next to impossible to catch, because it's extremely fast. It's next to impossible to see, because it's extremely stealthy. When you're trying to chase one of these things down, on those rare occasions when it allows itself to be seen, it's because it's just unleashed an extremely accurate an extremely devastating long-range high-explosive volley that's about to deliver you a world of hurt. And if by some chance you manage to survive the rain of high-explosive shells dropping on your head every 13 seconds, there's an excellent chance that you're going to run into one or more of the 20 torpedoes that this ship can launch behind it. As little thank you presents for anybody brave enough to chase it. Well that all sounds pretty good. Yeah, it does, and that's why I like the Zhao, but there are a couple of caveats that you have to tag on to that. The first is, that only really works when the Zhao is running away from somebody. And secondly, and nicely dodged torpedoes, good job daring for spotting them. And secondly, yes the Zhao is very very good at all of these things. But for everything that the Zhao does very well, there's another ship that does it better. The Zhao's very fast, yeah, but French cruisers are faster. The Zhao has devastating high explosive damage per minute, yeah, second only to HMS Goliath. And it's tied for second place with the French tier 10, the Henri. The Zhao has torpedoes, so does the Yoshino, and the Yoshino can equip 20km range torpedoes, and it's nearly as fast. The Zhao used to be the cool kid on the block, everybody wanted to be in the Zhao's gang, but the years went by, new ships arrived, and if they didn't do what the Zhao did, but better, they at least did it as well. The Kabarovsk, the Russian Tier 10 destroyer, suffered a similar fate, particularly with the introduction of the French destroyers. What is that, Ivan? You are of Le Fast, and you have the big guns? Ha 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 ha, that is cute. Interestingly, the Des Moines, which has been around as long as the Zhao has, has managed to remain relevant. It hasn't been power creeped into oblivion. The Des Moines still has that one thing that it and only it can do. Except for the Salem, which is just a premium Des Moines with worse radar and a better heel. 
it's the blistering rate of fire of its 8-inch autoloaders. That's what set the Des Moines apart and ensured that it managed to remain relevant for all of these years. So the Des Moines still got it and isn't likely to be superseded anytime soon. <coughs> yeah, so anyway, where were we? Oh yeah, the Zhao. The introduction of all of these new ships that could do everything that the Zhao did, but better, I mean, none of that made the Zhao bad. It's still a good ship. And if it's still a good ship, what's everybody complaining about? Well, I think, I think the best way to explain it is to put it like this. The English longbow, technically it's the Welsh longbow, was an amazing weapon. It dominated the battlefields of the Middle Ages, and it's still a lethal weapon today, in the hands of an expert, 700 years later. But you can count the number of people who take longbows to war today on the fingers of one head. And that's because guns are way, way better. You don't have to train every week from childhood in order to be effective on the battlefield with an AK-47. I mean, you should train to be effective with your AK-47, but you don't need to put the same amount of effort in to get better results. Because guns are just better. And the same things kind of happen to the Zhao. And that is why the Zhao does kind of need a bit of a buff. I mean, it is still really good under very specific circumstances. Circumstances like this, where you can just rain high explosive death down on targets at extreme range, and then flood the sea between you and them with torpedoes if they come after you. But there are any number of ships in World of Warships that can do either of those things. In fact, it's probably easier to list the ships that can't. She is still good at what she does, though. As you can see, 110,000 damage. Uh, there's the Arsonist Award, and he's already earned the Witherer. Got a bit of a map border problem here. But with the Grosser Kerr first sunk, he can now safely turn, particularly since the Montana is not even looking at him. And the Montana is going to regret that. Octopus, we said you can now safely get off the border. Oh, there's a special circle of hell reserved for border humpers. Oh wait, no, he is actually turning to get off the border. That's good. The reason why this is such a despised tactic is because the game still doesn't know how to calculate the trajectory of shots aimed at targets that are on or partially over the border. It's some kind of limitation with a game engine, which means there is no easy fix, and it would require changes to the basic game engine on some level in order for it to be fixed. And that, of course, is probably going to be very expensive, and potentially would have consequences further on in the game code, and so, for six years, they basically not touched it. Well, that's not true. Uh, quite early on, they did introduce the mechanic where if you're on the border, it reduces your engine power until eventually you slow to a stop. But that doesn't actually address the core issue of the fact that it is nigh impossible to land accurate shots on ships that are on the border. It doesn't matter if you're stationary or moving. If you're on the map border, shots that are aimed at you are either going to go long or they're going to go short, but they're very rarely going to actually go where they're aimed. Slowing a ship on the border down doesn't fix that. I have actually heard people trying to justify Wargaming's refusal to do anything about it by saying, well, if it was a problem, they would have fixed it by now. <laughs> Oh, you poor, sweet, innocent fools. <laughs> Listen, the only way to get Wargaming to fix anything that's wrong with their game is if it's going to cost them money to not fix it, or if they can monetize the fix. So, straight away, you can see exactly why, six years into development, this problem still exists. There are any number of simple ways for them to fix this. If you're humping the map border in order to avoid taking damage, just introduce some form of damage over time on people who are abusing the map border mechanics. It doesn't have to be an instant effect, it doesn't have to be a huge amount of damage because sometimes people just run into the border. But I hope we can all agree that there does need to be some kind of penalty other than ooh, I'm going really slow now, which doesn't actually address the reason why people abuse the map border mechanics in the first place. 
I'm going on a bit of a crusade today, aren't I? Anyway, what's going on with the battle? The Montana's down. Ended up getting taken out by a torpedo. Uh, yeah, it's an even battle. This could easily go either way. There's still everything to play for. There's only 10 points difference between the two teams. Both teams have lost five ships. Both teams hold two cap circles. This could go either way. We're in for a good fight. And in fact, this battle is going to go right down to the last second. Now, as a ship that generally tends to do best the further it can keep its enemies away, Octopus is naturally quite concerned that he's going to come sailing around a corner face first into an enemy battleship. So he's been asking for intelligence data in chat, and his division mate in the daring is like, relax dude, I got this. Ooh, there's the carrier. 14-ish kilometres away. Now there's some very useful information on screen here. Information that I'm sure Octopus was very, very happy to see. He has the RPF skill, and as the implement pops up again, you can see that the RPF position indicator is pointing straight towards him. Which means that the Immelman, which is already a good distance away, is the closest enemy ship. So he doesn't have to worry about any nasty surprises. I mean, he's still getting shot at across the map, but this is where the Zao likes to have its opponents at arm's length. And he can angle away from the Hindenburg, who switched to armor piercing, and just continue to rain high explosive down on the carrier. He's not going to set the carrier on fire, of course, because you're not allowed to set carriers on fire. Well, you can set them on fire, but they only burn for one tick, because they have automatic damage control that lasts an entire minute. And if they turn to give broadside, like the other one's doing, the armor piercing on the Zhao is pretty spicy as well. I mean, that was a 20,000 damage salvo. How about this one? Uh, really? <laughs> 5,000. Orange Jesus giveth, and Orange Jesus taketh away. Back to the high explosive, since the element is now starting to turn out. Well, that was a decent hit. A couple more HE salvos and the enemy carrier should be done. He needs to be careful though, because he is given broadside to at least one battleship. Starting to turn out again. There's the fire. Instant damage control. Fire is out. There it is. Final salvo. He is going to set another fire. But he's only going to get one tick. But guess what? One tick is enough. <laughs> that may be the first time anybody has ever seen an aircraft carrier going down because it was set on fire. I mean, not in reality, obviously. Um, <laughs> most aircraft carriers that sank sank because they were set on fire. But I mean here in World of Warships. Now that kill on the Immelman did put the team ahead by the princely sum of three points. However, that hasn't lasted long at all. The enemy team already ahead because they're flipping capture point Charlie and they've just done it. And they're about to start flipping capture point Alpha as well. And there it goes. So Octopus's team have no points coming in from caps. And the Napoli over there Honestly, I think he's been extremely optimistic if he thinks he's going to flip that cap circle. I think he really does need to think again. But the fact that he's in the cap circle means that Octopus's team aren't getting any points from it. I mean, the Napoli's going to die, and I'm sure Octopus's team are going to be grateful for the points from killing the Napoli, but every second the Napoli refuses to die in that cap circle, it's hurting Octopus's team. Come on. Somebody kill him. This has got to be it. Shots out, all turrets, got him. Sadly, the team did just lose a Grosser Kerr first, which means the enemy team are now even further ahead. And even though they were prevented from taking Alpha, that doesn't really matter because they still have the other three cap circles. So the mathematics here is actually fairly simple. Octopus's team need to stop dying, they need to start sinking more enemy ships, preferably at the same time flipping back some of those cap circles. But that is a lot easier said than done. Because look at where the enemy ships are. They're quite effectively blocking the approaches to all of those cap circles. There's a Hindenburg and a Kremlin up by cap circle Bravo. And down by Charlie, there's a Salem, a Halland, and a Thunderer who are threatening to, hopefully for them at least, do a better job at flipping A than the Napoli just did. So they're more than 100 points behind now. And that's going to get a lot worse before it gets any better. 
And for the moment at least, flipping any of these caps back is going to be more effort than it's worth. Seen some daring torpedoes there. But the Kremlin obviously saw them coming and has done a fine job of dodging them. Credit where credit's due. He's not dodging all of these high explosive shells though, is he? Now, we did just catch sight of the Thunderer down there. There he is. He is on very low health. Hmm. Oh, and there's the Salem with him. I'm sensing an opportunity here. Hang on a second. Salem's coming this way. HE's loaded. Not ideal. AP would be better, but the HE does still pack a punch. Assuming, of course, you can actually lob it over the low ground on the island there, and, well, yeah, he couldn't. But that's okay, because he didn't get spotted doing it. Now, the Salem does have radar, but he's unlikely to actually use it unless a couple of conditions have been satisfied. First, he has to suspect that he's about to run into a destroyer. And the Ragnar is shooting at him. That's him firing those shots across over there. But the Ragnar needs to be within 9 kilometers because that's the range of the Salem's budget version of the Des Moines radar. And there has to be a clear line of fire. And right now, of course, there isn't. The island's in the way. Most cruiser captains are reluctant to use their radar for the benefit of random teammates. And even if he was, there are no random teammates who have clear line of fire to the Ragnar. Now, the good news is that the Thunderer has just gone down. So... Octopus isn't going to have to fight the Salem and the Thunderer. The bad news is that the Halland was just spotted around the corner of this island as well, so he's probably going to have to fight. Well, he might not have to. The Halland could be heading the other way. He's definitely going to have to fight the Salem, though. And the Salem's HE DPM is nothing to be sniffed at either. But the Salem doesn't have torpedoes. And torpedoes are the great equaliser. Bear in mind, that is only one of the torpedo launchers that the Zhao has on the port side of the ship. There's the Salem. High explosive, into the superstructure, and there's the Halland as well. Okay, shit just got real. So, there goes the Salem. <laughs> and the Halland can't actually get his torpedoes away, if they're ready, because the wreck of the Salem's in the way. And the other reason he can't get the torpedoes away is because he's dead. Double strike. Five kills, Kraken unleashed, 260,000 damage. The drama, however, is not yet over. I mean, it's five against two, with the two being the Kremlin and the Hindenburg. An octopus's team still have a destroyer, the Daring, and the carrier, the Hakuryu. So it's difficult to see how the team could possibly lose here, especially since the Daring just flipped the cap circle at Bravo but then immediately got forced out of it by the Hindenburg and the Kremlin. And the enemy team are still four points, eight points ahead. It's difficult to be sure. The counter keeps flipping. And here's where Octopus has to make a hard choice, because the cap circle at Charlie is right next to him. He could get into that cap circle and flip it completely uncontested. But there's less than two minutes of the game left. And if either of those guys sinks somebody, they're probably going to win. Despite the fact that they're outnumbered 5-2, to two, they're nearly 20 points ahead now. I mean, they're probably not going to reach 1,000 points in the next minute and a half, but they don't have to. They just have to have more points than Octopus's team. And they've got two cap circles. And Octopus's team only have one. And they're about to flip the third. Although they do keep getting reset. And Octopus is starting to attract some unwanted attention now. However, look at what the Ragnar's doing on the minimap down to the south. He is heading for that cap circle, so that's going to buy them some time. But that alone isn't going to be enough. It's just going to hold the scores steady. They still need to sink something without losing anything in return. And the Hindenburg can definitely see the Daring. The Daring's taking some hits. He's popped his smoke and he's using it to fall back. And he's also using it to aim some torpedoes. Check this out. You're going to see the Daring's torpedoes. Now remember the Daring can ripple fire its torpedoes, it can fire them one at a time. There they go. Oh Montana, what are you doing? No Montana, <laughs> Montana's going out to fight. No, we can't afford to lose any ships. Please Montana, think very carefully about what you're doing. There go the Daring torpedoes, check this out. He looks like he put a deliberate delay after the first three torpedoes. 
so the Hindenburg swerved to avoid the first three and ran straight into the second bunch. With his smoke gone, the Daring can't afford to shoot and give his position away. And the... Oh, the Montana got the Hindenburg! You beauty! That's put them head on points with less than 10 seconds to go. But the Kremlin's guns are loaded and he's looking right at the Montana. Oh, I've got a bad feeling about this. The Montana died, with zero seconds on the clock. So, what does that mean? Did they win, or did they lose? Hey, it was a win. <laughs> the Montana died, but he died after the clock had hit zero, at which point the game was already over, and the team had already won. Still way too close for comfort. As you can tell, I believe Octopus actually live-streams World of Warships. Perhaps you should go watch him. Actually, he's been doing quite a bit of Age of Empires 4 lately, but he still does Warships at least two or three times a week. Link down below in the video description. Congratulations, and I do hope you all enjoyed today's video. As always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.